Every day, around 50,000 people in England test positive for COVID-19, the highest number in six months and rising fast. Most are young, unvaccinated, fit enough to survive, but not all. 277 people died last week and among the vulnerable, so-called Freedom Day brings little more than anxiety. There's a lot of concerning information coming out which show rising hospitalisations in the UK, rising case numbers, um, the attendant concerns of the rising numbers of people suffering from long Covid symptoms in this country. But also, just in the last 24 hours or so, we're starting to hear from doctors that NHS services are starting to have clinics and services cancelled because of the high rates of staff sickness and isolation that's needing to happen. It's a small mercy then that the schools will close in a few days' time. More than 800,000 children were sent home last week because someone in a year group bubble tested positive. Many will begin their summer break in isolation. Parents will worry about the ongoing risk of infection. I won't give up the mask and no, nor my children or my husband, we won't. We will wear the mask uh, because I can't see really a nice and clear uh, future in the next months. To wear them or not to wear them, masks are a question the government has wrestled with, but without conclusive answers. They'll no longer be required by law, but most offices, shops and transport companies will continue to encourage them. And there's this, the National Health Service app pinging away, incessantly telling hundreds of thousands of people to self-isolate each week because a close contact has tested positive. And each ping means income lost, staff shortages, holiday plans in ruins. There is some good news. Singing is back, banned since the start of the pandemic, and a chorus of full-throated approval for that. For people who sing, whether you sing as an amateur or a professional, it's, it's a very important part of your life. It's a way of keeping your sanity and keeping your relationship to the world. And so for us to be able to finally get together and hear a sound around us, not just coming out of a few speakers in front of our computer, it's just been revelatory. It means churches, nightclubs and theatres can roar back into life, freed also from social distancing rules. But will there be people brave enough to fill them? It may be called Freedom Day for some, uh, Jonah, but in fact, for the Prime Minister and his Finance Minister, one wonders whether, to a certain extent, they might have shot themselves in the foot by sort of singing the praises of Freedom Day. Well, you know, the government's rationale, in the, in the words of Prime Minister Boris Johnson, is if not now, uh, when, if you wait, as the scientists are urging uh, for more people to be va vaccinated, uh, there are always going to be gaps uh, in that vaccine programme vulnerabilities within it, uh, well, then you risk the, uh, the possibility of a higher peak later in the year going into the winter, a difficult time for the NHS uh, anyway. They don't want to have to do that. You would also be missing out on the summer, the natural firebreak, as he called it, of the schools being off, uh, preventing wider spread infections there. And all the while, you've noticed in the government messaging here, it's become ever less gung-ho, ever more uh, tempered, frankly, quite confusing. People are being told to go out and live their lives, but to do so with maximum caution, exercising personal responsibility. Uh, and on that point you raised there, with the hundreds of thousands of people being pinged into isolation every week, include now Boris Johnson himself, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, the uh, Secretary, Treasury Secretary, uh, and indeed the Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, who's actually got the virus. These are th the three most senior, arguably, government figures in fighting COVID. All will be watching the so-called celebration of Freedom Day tightly locked up inside their homes. Jonah Hull, for the latest, thanks very much. Joining us from our London Broadcast Centre. Dipti Gurdasani is a clinical epidemiologist and senior lecturer at Queen Mary University in London. Now she says lifting restrictions could lead to more mutations that can be more dangerous. This is not a virus that we can live with. I mean, um, we are seeing this virus evolve and lead to a new highly transmissible variant every few months. Then 
which then takes over across the world and leads to another surge. The only way to prevent this sort of virus adaptation and protect our precious vaccine resources is to prevent transmission. And that's not just in a regional level, but in a global level. We know that many countries don't have adequate access to vaccines yet, and it'll be a long time, perhaps even one or two years before everyone is vaccinated. And in that period of time, if we allow transmission, to continue at high levels, we will see many, many more new variants, and one could potentially escape vaccines more fully, which could have uh, implications for the pandemic across the globe. So I think countries need to think carefully about not just, um, you know, vaccination strategies, but also how to keep transmission low with good surveillance, test trace, isolate systems, and, uh, you know, good uh, measures to deal with aerosol transmission like investment in ventilation in indoor environments and masking and good border controls until we all get this under control. What's happened now is we've had a highly transmissible strain emerge which has threatened elimination in areas that haven't had transmission for long periods of time like Vietnam and that's what's really concerning and if we continue to live with this virus we're going to see more and more transmissible strains and at some point elimination is going to become impossible and they may also keep ahead of our vaccines which means even with vaccines we may not be able to protect ourselves and that will be a really dangerous place to be 